All right. Uh, call to order the Gladstone Planning Commission, 525 Portland Avenue, Gladstone, Oregon. Today is 20 August 2019. It's 6.31 p.m. And we'll call to order. Please call the roll. Commissioner Langston. Present. Commissioner Natalie Smith. Present. Commissioner Malachi. Here. Commissioner Poole. Here. Commissioner Wentz. Commissioner Pat Smith. Here. Chair Rowlett. Here. Let's salute the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Yeah, not now. She said what now? Later. No, she did actually say that she would. Um, I'm going to read the agenda if you don't have a copy of it. Um, and if you're going to speak uh, or you want to testify, we have cards to fill out there in the back or on the table over here. Um, the agenda tonight is first of all going to be the consent agenda which is the approval of the 2019 June 18 meeting. We did not have a meeting in July. And then we'll go to the regular agenda, which will be the planning report for June and July 2019. And the third item is discussion of a request for a route change bus stop for the new Civic Building at 18505 Portland Avenue. And that will be Tom Mills from TriMap. And then we'll have a public hearing, which is item number four, which is uh, Z0311-19-D for design review. And then after the public hearing, we'll have business from the audience. And that's another opportunity for the public to speak about uh, whatever you want, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> You have three minutes if you want to do that. And then we'll have business from the Planning Commission. And then uh, it says information only, update on changes to extension compliance, time limits in the City of Gladstone Municipal Code. And that's like tonight when we do our public hearing, there will be, if it's approved for the uh, quasi-judicial hearing, uh, there will be a one-year use. And that's this information only thing pertains to that. And then we'll adjourn. Uh, so the consent agenda. Let's start there. Does anybody have any ads, moves, changes to the consent agenda? Would someone like to make a motion to approve the consent agenda? I'll make a motion that we approve the consent agenda. I'll second that. Commissioner Smith and Commissioner Poole, Natalie Smith. Um, it's been moved and seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Uh, none opposed. Done. Uh, monthly planning report. Thank you. Um, so we have two months to go over. I'll be brief. Um, we had quite a few building permits that came through. One was the Civic Center, which is obviously under construction now. Um, we had some tenant improvements on Portland Ave. So we're seeing some activity there. Um, in July, we had some residential building permit work and then cell tower upgrades. Um, the only planning commission action was the children's course um, clubhouse expansion and we've seen pretty regular um, customer contacts with an uptick in June continuing a bit through July so that's pretty normal from what we saw last year 
So and you got that many phone calls, that big of an increase in phone calls last year at this time. What are they about? I, it, it, I don't know if it was exactly the same, but it was we saw an incre a similar increase around the same time period. I think because it's the construction season, okay. we get a lot of calls about what's my setback or I'm trying to pour my foundation right now. Um, where can I put my shed? Things like that. Yeah, I called. Do you know what kind of upgrades <laughs> were the on the cell tower? Um, it was in-kind replacement of electrical cell tower equipment. It wasn't increasing the height or doing any work on the ground, so it was consistent with a previously approved conditional use permit. So um, I have a question about on uh, Webster Road, the old senior center slash rehab that one level uh -huh. structure across from the water tower what's going on with that it sounded like they were all ready to go to uh planning on that and then it just kind of mm -hmm. disappeared so you're talking about the multifamily residential yeah project? it was most recently used as a rehab center Oh, the one um, so for the, the teen rehabilitation? Right. Before the that, it was Glen Gladstone right. Rehabilitation. Right, so the, it's county-owned now. There was a property transfer going on. Um, they are doing outreach right now. They're gearing up to do outreach with the community to make sure that everyone's informed in the neighborhood about what their proposal is. It's my understanding they're going to come in in the next, few months potentially with the actual application it would be a conditional use and a similar use determination land use approval that would come before you okay but Good. There's, there's nothing pending there's nothing submitted um, and we don't have a time frame so I didn't put that on here yet is this the when I see the contact it's under Cascadia planning yeah that is for the multifamily apartment complex that's on the church property okay they have changed their proposal to now not be a separate apartment unit but to just be support services for the existing apartment building that's um, on the adjacent property okay so we're working through options with them on that um, did we ever active though. did we ever get any resolution on cars planet landscaping we anticipate that will be coming forward in October to you um, they have submitted a landscape plan Good. Um, with their current landscaping shown on there of what they have installed and so we will be going over the kind of what was approved and then what they've constructed and the difference and hopefully getting that through a design review process but it just came in kind of okay. as complete recently so we're still reviewing it good i'm glad we're moving forward yeah and then a couple other updates on our end um joy fields is our new planner senior planner at the county um, she comes to us with many years of experience in planning um, she is going to be taking over for me while i'm out on maternity leave and so she's getting up to speed with everything very quickly i may add um, and she wanted to say just a couple sentences to introduce herself to okay. Hello. i have about 10 years of experience uh, I worked with 19 local governments in the Piedmont of North Carolina, providing long-range long planning and technical assistance to the local governments. And then I moved to Transylvania County, North Carolina, and became the planner for the county in a small department. So I did a range of things from subdivision review to um, cell towers to any, anything that came through the office. Um, and I started here mid-July, and I'm looking forward to working with you all. Welcome. We're glad you're here. Thanks, Joy. Yep. Um, and one last thing, I passed out a handout we just received this afternoon from DLCD for Housing Bill 2001. It goes over some key dates in there. Um, as you'll see, their model code is not expected to be released till December 31st, 2020. Um, it's our understanding that until this date on here of June 20th, 2022, that the city would not be forced to implement any of the model code. Um, ideally, what the state, what the bill is geared to do is encourage local governments to adopt their own ordinance update to reflect the bill before that um, timeline. 2021 for us, though, right? 2022. That's for large cities, first. 
So you would be within the Portland metro boundary, though. So I believe you would fall within large cities, We're but all in that's that something. Same UGB right. Metro uh, type. According to the training we had today, they said no. It would be June well, 2021. You know, I was thinking about that during that training we <coughs> had, and mm -hmm. then they did say metro, small cities or metro. And, and I was thinking yeah. about that, but I didn't question it. I probably should have. Well, at the yeah. last meeting, the reason I'm excuse me, inter interrupting there, but the, this just happened to come up, and it was our city attorney when I mentioned that, you know, s cities of under 25,000 or whatever the number was in population, it wouldn't apply. And he said, no, you're in the metro so Correct. Um, so, so you'll just see making there sure that's what I was hearing. You'll see there <laughs> under large cities, it says all cities within the Portland metro boundary with a population right. of more than a thousand. And again, it's up to DLCD and the state to clarify this, but that's what I'm interpreting from their summary they've sent out. So you'll see in there it says duplexes, triplexes, quadplexes, cottage clusters, and townhomes. That's their middle housing requirement. So that's all coming down the pipeline. This is just kind of gives you an idea of dates. Um, so jumping from single for. family to quad is going to be a big, big change for that community. Just on the horizon, wanted to loop you in. We wouldn't be involved in any of the long-range planning for this, but I thought I would share that information with you so you're in the loop. <coughs> Good. That concludes the monthly report. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Um, we're going to go on to regular agenda item number three, discussion of request for a route change bus stop at the new Civic Center building at 18505 Portland Avenue, and that will be Tom Mills from TriMet. And we had a lot of discussion about this. Thanks for being here to uh, discuss this. Thank you. Uh, thank you for having me. My name is Tom Mills. I am the Manager of Service Planning and Development at TriMet. Uh, and I'm here to talk about Bus Line 34 uh, and your new uh, Civic Center City Hall uh, development that will be happening. Um, you mentioned the address. I don't remember the exact address, but uh, along Portland Avenue uh, near Glen Echo. Uh, this, uh, I don't recall who reached out to me, but uh, it was brought to my... No, okay. okay, thank you. Uh, it uh, was sent to me uh, early in the summer, and we had some email interaction, um, and uh, I was asked to come to the meeting. Um, I know you've all had an opportunity to, to get this map, um, and on the back of the map, uh, there is some statistics here. Um, so uh, if we were to serve uh, the new Civic Center uh, with the bus, it would require a route change uh, to the existing bus, um, routing the bus um, off Southeast Abernathy uh, to Glen Echo. Um, and that's never something we, we do lightly uh, because we do have existing customers, though there may not be many. Uh, there are existing customers on Abernathy, and uh, they're, you know, they may have this may be their only means of, of transportation. Um, so typically, in this kind of scenario, we would do uh, outreach to those customers if uh, we were uh, to agree that we wanted to go ahead and reroute the bus. Um, however, um, so as you see in the statistics, um, there are about 21. Uh, ons and offs per day um, for lift deployments per month. That is uh, the deployment of the ramp uh, for on the bus uh, to help people with mobility devices get on the vehicle. Um, now you can see where City Hall is located. There's quite a few more uh, ons and offs and lift deployments. Of course, we don't know that all those folks are going to City Hall. Certainly a, a good portion of them are coming to the commercial area of downtown Gladstone. Uh, and may still be riding to that location whether we route, reroute the bus or not. Um, however, uh, there is, there, you know, City Hall is likely to be a destination uh, for some folks, and uh, it's very possible that we would get more rides uh, by routing the bus to the new Civic Center. Um, and the number of uh, riders who would be impacted by the route change um, is relatively small. Um, you see on the map 
um, I guess I can use this here. You can see on the map uh, the most of the riders are uh, here at Abernathy and Portland. Mm -hmm. uh, certainly we could potentially have stops on Portland uh, and so those folks riding to that location would still have access. Uh, likewise, uh, I don't know how well this works. You but can go up there if you want. Oh, sure. Well, at Glen Echo and Abernathy, uh, we could potentially have bus stops on Glen Echo, and those folks, it would not be probably too burdensome. So really, you're talking about four folks a day um, who would have a, a longer walk. So it's not uh, a tremendous amount. Um, however, we do have a few other concerns. Um, obviously, any time you make the route longer, uh, that um, has an impact on travel time for our riders who are riding through. Um, I don't think this would be tremendously longer, but uh, there, there might be some riders who feel like they're already at riding too long. Um, so there's that something to think about for us. Um, and then some uh, issues I wanted to raise to your attention um, you'll see where I've marked in kind of an orange box up there um, along uh, uh, Glen Echo between Abernathy and Addy Road. Uh, the pavement in that area uh, looks like uh, a bus could do quite a bit of damage to it. Um, it looks like it's, and maybe that's already in your plans for uh, upgrading. Um, the other issue I, c I raised is a lack of sidewalks. Um, now, TriMet has bus stops in the region that don't have sidewalks. Um, those bus stops are not accessible for people with mobility devices. Our general manager uh, recently uh, set out a new goal and policy to try to make all our bus stops ADA accessible. That is a long-term goal. It's going to take us years to get to that point. But as a result, uh, we are not looking to add bus stops that add, add even more bus stops that are not accessible to people in mobility devices. So if there are no sidewalks uh, there, then uh, it, we are not uh, inclined to, to move the route uh, without sidewalks. Um, now, I would imagine with the new Civic Center uh, that there will be sidewalks on that side of the street. I'm not sure if there would be sidewalks on the, um, I guess what I would call the east side of the street. Um, and I don't know if that is planned in the future. Uh, also, uh, we have some concerns about Glen Echo. Uh, it does appear that uh, there are some uh, vacant lots and uh, an area there that looks like it's probably a wetland. Um, now, of course, it probably wouldn't matter that there are no sidewalks going through a wetland because there's nobody to pick up. Um, however, it does concern us that we would be moving from an area where we have development uh, and traveling through an area where we don't have development. So um, those are some concerns we have, the biggest being the lack of sidewalk um, uh, along uh, some of this uh, reroute area. Um. How many stops would you envision along the proposed route that doesn't have sidewalks? Um, well, let me let me involved? let me go up to the. So uh, certainly you want to have. Uh, so if you have a stop here at the new Civic Center, you would want to have an opposing stop going in the other direction. Uh, you know, potentially you could have a stop here, although that's probably pretty close. So then your next stop maybe might be in this area here. Um, so really, you know, one and then two, three. I don't recall if there's sidewalk on, no sidewalk on either side. Okay. So that would be two, three stops that would be inaccessible. Uh, I mean, I guess maybe you could put a stop over here, which I believe does on this side of the uh, on this side of the intersection. So uh, maybe you can I think you can have sidewalk there. Yeah, on Audi Audi Addy going north, there's sidewalk. Yeah. But on Glen Echo west of Addy, is there sidewalk? No. Oh no sidewalk. So, so we want to have at least a pair in this 
uh, stretch here, and then you would need one going the other direction. There. With this proposal, would you also envision putting another one at the high school? Yeah, I would think for sure if we were on uh, Portland here, we would definitely want to stop the side at the high school, and there is sidewalk, and, yeah. and it looks like it's wide enough. So, a question. So, like the high school, in my mind, you know, just getting closer to the community center would be a plus for some people. Still a bit of a walk from the high school, but there's a good turnaround there in the high school that, you know, you could drop and pick up right in front of the high school there, even. Um, just going through the parking lot, it's a pretty wide road there. Instead of doing a whole route change, just go down Portland Avenue a little bit and have a stop right at the front of the high school and then turn back around and go back down Addy. Yeah. And then you wouldn't have to change your route except to add one stop at the high school. Yeah. Um, you would not be inclined to do that. Uh, that's a deviation. So, you know, we have to, I mean, while it, it serves the high school, uh, we do have to think about our customers who are on board, and uh, that, you know, I think we can all agree that if you're riding through, that would be inconvenient. Uh, what we do find with high schools is um, that, surprisingly, we don't get a lot of rides out of high school. Well, maybe it's not surprising, because students have school bus here, uh, which is free. So do you know anything about Oregon City High Schools, if they have ridership uh, at all? Well, so the city of Oregon, are you referring to the high school? Yeah, well, see, with Gladstone, they're trying to get more students at Gladstone. So if you lived in Oregon City, for instance, you could go to Gladstone High. Okay. And so, you know, I know a couple of kids that, that did live in Oregon City and chose for one reason or another to go to Gladstone. They had to take the city bus. They didn't like the walk. It's amazing, you know, when you're 17 that you can't walk a few feet from the drop over here at the senior yeah. center to the high school, but they acted like it was a big deal uh -huh. to go that far, right? Yeah. Um, so I, I wasn't aware about the uh, kind of ability, the, the reciprocity between Gladstone and Oregon City. Um, so I, I wasn't aware that students were riding. And so do I understand then that the school district does not provide school bus service from Oregon City to Gladstone. No, of course not. They could only, you know, they have a hard enough time just keeping up with Gladstone, let alone going any farther. Okay. And then Jennings Lodge, same thing. They can go, you know, from there, but there's no bus service unless they, you know. Because there are some students. No public service that's free anyway, I should say. Yeah. Um, because I, I hear also that there's, residents over in unincorporated, uh, whether it's Jennings Lodge or Oak Grove, that would normally go to Rex Pudman and they have a choice to come here if they want. Okay. So, and again, because they're outside of our boundary, they would have to either be dropped off or take public transportation. Right. So with the Civic Center uh, stop, would the buses be running late enough that citizens could ride it to planning and city council meetings? So currently, uh, I don't believe we do run late enough What's okay. this last time that it comes through Gladstone? No, just looking at it, um, the last departures are between five and six o'clock. So because to be really honest, kind of the last departures really those kind of commuter right. nine to five. I understand commuters who are who are trying to get home, uh, but we don't run much later. That that is the area that I am most concerned with. Is we want to make sure that the the citizens are able to get to the meetings that might impact them. Okay. And these meetings, both city council and planning commission, are generally around 6:30 at night. Okay. Um, it would be ideal if people could use public transportation to get to those meetings. Sure. But of course, there is an issue of ridership, and as you can see, the room isn't exactly packed tonight. We Not didn't tonight, have to have yeah. the fire marshal 
you know, <laughs> counting heads or anything. Although there are times when it is, yeah. Yeah. depending on what's on the agenda. But I understand about ridership because the bus goes right in front of my house and, you know, there's sometimes nobody on there or one person. And, you know, it costs money to run the bus that we're all paying for. So it is a it is a challenge that we are constantly uh, you know, struggling with. Uh, this balance between uh, the demand for the service and, and how much supply to put out. Um, you know, uh, we want to get the service out to as many people as possible, but we also want it to be used. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, where is that, uh, where is that right sweet spot? Certainly, if we put out more service, we will get more riders, but will it be enough to justify the cost of putting out more service? Okay. Line 34 is uh, the River Road line, so it, it, uh, after, you know, crossing McLaughlin here, it takes River Road up uh, through Milwaukee, and then it actually cuts up uh, to Johnson Creek, and it goes up by the, um, uh, excuse me, it goes up by uh, the Tacoma Park and Ride, or the Tacoma Station, oh, yeah. okay. uh, and then uh, Gosh, I should know this off the top of my head. I believe it goes to Clackamas Town Center. Um, so uh, there definitely are some destinations, but a lot of that is uh, kind of residential. Mm -hmm. um, on the River Road side, uh, it doesn't take, on the west side of the road, you just have a, a couple properties and then you're at the river. So that kind of restricts the number of people who could ride the bus because there's just not more development mm -hmm. west. Um, so, you know, some of those constraints like that are what winds up kind of depressing ridership to some extent and then um, making it more difficult for us to... Speaking of, for this particular use case, um, even if it was just the second and third Tuesday nights, mm -hmm. just those two nights per month would be helpful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because those are, those are the City Council Planning Commission nights yeah. out of the month. So on River Road, you have those um, retirement centers and stuff. Yep. Do those peop those people do they ride the bus? Uh, I think uh, Willamette. Uh, I'm trying to remember the name of the Rose Villa Rose Villa Manor yeah. and, and Willamette Manor. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, there is ridership. Um, it's not gangbusters. Um, <laughs> you know those uh, t types of facilities usually have their own transportation. Um, typically for outings. Um, they also have their own uh, uh, food, uh, you know, kit restaurants within them. So, uh, you know, people aren't grocery shopping quite so much. And even if they are, they oftentimes have grocery trips on with their own public transportation. Um, so it, I, I certainly uh, understand the challenge of uh, trying to serve uh, you know, suburban areas uh, with kind of suburban style development, which is a lower density. Um, and, you know, in uh, downtown here, actually, I, I feel quite good about the amount of service we have here. We have, uh, f you know, four, three bus lines that come right through downtown. Be besides this, there's, this is line 34. We have line 31, which goes up to Clackamas Town Center um, by way of Webster Road and Thiessen and 82nd. Uh, we have line um, uh, 32, which comes along Oatfield Road, and uh, and then over out on McLaughlin, we have line 33. Uh, and line 33 comes every 15 minutes all day long, uh, and then the other the, all the other three come 30, 35 minutes every 30, 35 minutes. Um, so, uh, but this is uh, a bit more of a challenge in this location. Okay. Do you, I don't want to put you on the spot here, but when the line that comes up from Oregon City, if I remember right, it comes to Portland Avenue and then it turns east and ultimately goes up Oatfield. Yeah, that's line Does, 32. Are we, is it taking Dartmouth, do you know? or? It I, is. Um, is there any way uh, it yes, could go taking, farther north Dartmouth. before it takes an eastward turn and get us partway here without reinventing everything? Don't answer me now, just a thought. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. We'll go out afterwards and no. Yeah, we can we'll, take a look we'll at it. We yeah. seriously have to look at it, but you understand I'm saying, if I don't want to get too far off this sure. discussion, but 
I, I'm just thinking that might be a way to, mm -hmm. to jog that line. We had quite a discussion over this because of library siting and things, so mm -hmm. you get to know the bus line whether you're riding it or not. Sure. Uh, I, yeah, you know, when I think about it a little bit, um, Line 32, Oatmeal, o Oatfield, and Line 31, Webster Road, uh, that travels on, Webster Road line travels on Oatfield for a little bit. So there may be some duplication of service, and if it's possible to have one go up and then cut over, yeah. maybe. I'd have to well, take a look at that. And ultimately, geographically, it's constrained because if we were to conveniently go down and, and just turn up, you know, your, your mm -hmm. the distance between Portland and Oakfield at some places is pretty restricted, but just something I'd appreciate if you at least look at. And sure. We'll get back to this one for now. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Now, that might be the solution for all of this. Even if we had just the final destination, as I'm looking at this map, because it comes down Portland Avenue and then turns right on Abernathy, if it went down to at least where the Civic Center was, turn on Dunaway and turn around and go back down and then go back on the main... Do you see what I'm saying? Uh, could you repeat that, please? Coming down Portland Avenue instead of turning left mm -hmm. onto Abernathy. Going uh -huh. north on Portland. Yeah. Continue mm -hmm. to go down past the high school, down to where the Civic Center is. Mm -hmm. There's Dunaway there. Yeah. There's going to be a nice parking lot. They could go in, turn around, come right back down on Portland Avenue, and get back on their their path. Uh, yeah, that would... I mean, if we we're going to go all the way to Dunaway, we might as well continue on up to Glen Echo and come down, because I would be concerned about taking people, you know, who are traveling through that far out of direction. Mm -hmm. um, Actually, it's not that far. Is it a quarter yeah. of a mile, even? Yeah. There's just it's people's not perspective, far. like, they know, yeah. like, we're going that way, and we're going to come back. Right. Like yeah, go back. Yeah, okay. Psychologically, yeah. it's kind of like, what are we doing? <laughs> yeah. Kind of like, yeah. um, you know, flying to California, but having to go to Phoenix. Yeah, first. exactly. Yeah, uh, yeah, you know, yeah. We've all been there. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. Any more questions or comments? Um, yeah. So, um, for the orange box. Yes. So your primary concern there is about road quality in that location, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. And so for that one, we'd want to reach out to Public Works to get their opinion on that road. Um, it's pretty. It's pretty bright. I walk that. Me and my wife walk that almost every night, and we. Avoid Glen, we gra avoid Glen Echo because there's no sidewalks. It's tight. People f drive fast down there, and people park all along the roads. So yeah. it's not easy uh, to navigate. That in the or like in the orange, yes, it's it's yeah. all it's potholy. It's but yeah. Public Works has got some plan as far as what roads they're upgrading and when. Sure. So we need to talk to Public Works about that road specifically. Yep, yep. I agree. Well, and to build a crossing at that wetland to upgrade it is in the seven million dollar range. Yeah. And that's the ultimate plan. So, not that we don't care if you crack the pavement worse, but <laughs> no matter what we do, it's it's a little problematic there. But there's it's it's more the matter of work. If you had reasonable access at Addy or places where you were stopping and reasonable sidewalks, then some of these other things I think don't matter so much, but we've got some obstructions. Mm -hmm. um, Gladstone's got a few haphazard spots, <laughs> you'll come to find out. Besides that, there's nobody that's going to get on that bus between Portland Avenue and Abernathy on Glen Echo. There just isn't anybody there. There's yeah. a couple of duplexes down there and that's it. Yeah, yeah there's nothing and then you, Yeah, you get up to Addy <coughs> and somebody might, but that's clear up past the Yeah. Line. Uh, yeah. Anyway, yeah. there's nothing down there. I mean, if we were to pursue this, we would have an outreach to the neighborhood uh, and and our existing riders uh, to get their opinions on it. Um, you know, they themselves, folks on Glen Echo, may say, "We don't want a bus on here." Folks on Abernathy might say, "Don't take away our bus." Um, or sometimes we hear nothing from folks. Um, so. Um, so if we get to that point where, you know, that there's the access uh, and, you know, we think, well, maybe we can make this change, um, then we'll, we'll do an outreach to the community. What's the, uh, what's the policy about going through neighborhoods? Like on a, does it have to have like a divider? Like what, what's the, the Yeah, it's a great question. So um, we, uh, 
kind of the lowest level street that we will be on is, is a collector street. Um, so sometimes you'll still have the, the double yellow striping on, on a collector street. Mm -hmm. um, we do not want to be on kind of small residential streets. Mm -hmm. um, they're hard for us to navigate. Mm -hmm. um, and the folks living on those streets really don't want us there. Sure. Uh, we just, yeah. we shake the houses, we make too much noise. Uh, people don't want the bus stops in front of their house, house. kind of thing. Um, I think we talked about this in email, but uh, would it be possible for the Civic Center one to be a covered bus stop? Yeah, so um, a bus shelter is what you're referring to, and um, that really would depend on, on ridership. Uh, so we would want to probably run the service and see how many folks we get per day. Um, we have a, a threshold of, of 50 boardings uh, per day, uh, per weekday on average as being that threshold where we something where a bus stop would be eligible for a shelter the bus stop would also the sidewalk would also have to be a little bit wider than than most other sidewalk in order to accommodate the the bus shelter and still have uh, the the kind of walk through area and that's kind of why i was asking is i was thinking that if we wanted it to be ada and be a shelter it's better for them to do that now before yeah the buildings are all done? Yeah. Right. Absolutely. I mean, we can certainly, uh, I can have our bus stops folks uh, work with your folks who are uh, d working on drawings um, and make sure that the plans are can accommodate uh, a bus shelter. Okay. You guys have, like, typical details that someone could just grab off your website that just kind of gives... Not off the website, know, but uh, we can give you the dimensions that that we, uh, I'd have my folks reach out to you and, and give you the dimensions that you need. Yeah, yeah, it might be practical for the city to look at, for lack of a better word, providing a little easement or something even that might help. Sure. Because in the future, you know, we're going to have people there whether it's just inevitable. Yeah. Um, a lot of times it's just, uh, you know, you have your sidewalk and maybe it's only six feet wide and it's just a matter of putting a, a concrete pad Right. adjacent to the sidewalk where we can mount the shelter and then and you know you don't have to redo all the sidewalk and so if the city owns the property then it's a lot easier uh, than asking a private property to donate that piece of property for the concrete pad. Well, one last uh, aspect of this there, there's actually two buildings going in we're going to have a police station okay and uh, we, we also have court and having folks being a lot of times they're having problems with their driver's licenses and they need oh, public yeah, transportation sure, yeah. so mm -hmm. thinking down the road since this building is not the buildings aren't done um, even if we don't get too much traction on this now we'll come knocking on your doors we get a little closer and sure. and come back and pay us a visit and mm -hmm. maybe we can get something worked there and Tweet. what is the opening date actually Tammy if you would the, um, May of 2020. Okay. Somewhere in that neighborhood or, or later spring. Yeah. Okay. Late May before Great. early May. Okay. Yeah. Before summer. Yeah, it's a big project, but it's yeah. it's moving along. Yeah. Great. And right now, you know, we've got TriMet to the current facility. Yeah. But we were concerned that they were going to, you know, the residents were going to lose that capability once we relocated. Anyone? Thank you, Thank you for, for coming. coming. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. We'll continue this conversation. Sure. And can uh, can we follow up with Public Works um, to find out about feasibility of that one orange section? Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. Is there anything else we need to? Um, be checking in on. I don't know, is there? I think it's different now, right? As far as I know. All right. Um, I think we're ready for the public hearing. Public hearing. Oh, should I open it now? I forget. We're opening the public hearing for uh, file number Z0311-19D, 
design review for conversion of an existing 1,699 square foot residential structure to a mixed use building with one apartment unit, two office spaces, one leasable commercial space. No additions to the existing structure are proposed, only internal and external remodeling of the site improvements including landscaping. And that will be Daryl McKay. Um, I have to read this about uh, quasi-judicial land use hearings, uh, which I read the first part. And what the meeting will be conducted as follows. Staff will present a staff report. Questions, if any, by the hearing body for staff. We will then open the public hearing for testimony and time will be limited as follows. Uh, applicants, we don't really have a set time. Persons in favor of the application, uh, which would be the public for the most part, for uh, three minutes each, and you do need to have a card if you want to testify, filled out so that we can notify you, etc. Persons in favor of the application, persons opposed to applications, and rebuttal from the applicants. We will then close the public hearing. No other comments will be heard from the public or the applicants. And final comments by the staff. After that, questions of the staff, if any, by the commission. Then the commission will discuss and deliberate. <coughs> a decision, <coughs> excuse me, a decision may be made by the planning commission at the close of the hearing or the matter may be continued to a time and date certain. Any party, and a party is anyone who testifies or has submitted material, may request the continuance of this hearing or may request the record remain open for seven days. If the matter is continued to a date certain, this will be the only notice of that date that you will receive. If you wish to speak, please come forward with the microphone. When you come forward, please at least state your name for the record. And we do the cards have the address on them or not? Thank you. So we have your address on the card. If you don't want to have your address on the public record, the recording that's being made of this proceeding. In making a decision, the commission may consider whether the application meets the relevant approval criteria of the city's land use regulations those criteria are identified in the staff report and are available in this room this evening. The testimony and evidence must address these criteria or other criteria that you believe apply to the decision. Please note if you fail to raise an issue with sufficient specificity to enable the commission, the applicant, and the parties an opportunity to respond to the issue you will not be able to appeal that issue to the City Council or the Land Use Board of Appeals. And thus the Commission is making a recommendation to the City Council and tonight we are not. The decision will be final unless it's appealed. The Commission's decision will be the City's final decision in this matter unless it is appealed to the City Council. An appeal must be filed within 15 days and in accordance with Chapter 17.92 of the Gladstone Municipal Code. Failure by the applicant to raise constitutional or other issues regarding proposed conditions of approval with sufficient specificity to allow the Commission to respond to the issue precludes an action for damages in circuit court. So if it got to that point, after all the other stuff, at this time, I'd like to ask members of the Commission to disclose any ex parte contacts, bias, or conflicts of interest. Please state if you've visited the site, and we'll just start at the end and work our way to the other end. I have not visited the site, and I do not have any uh, conflicts of interest. I visited the site. No conflicts. I have visited the site. I have no conflict. And I have visited the site, and if we, you know, looked out the front door, we'd see it. And um, I have no bias or any conflicts of interest either. 
Yeah, I, I also have visited the site and have no conflicts and haven't had any contacts with anyone. I have no conflicts uh, about the site and I have visited twice. Twice? Twice. That's a lot. So I parked right in front of it tonight yeah. so I took another look. <laughs> Once at the car show. <laughs> yeah, I saw it at the car show too. So I did <coughs> a lot. Uh, does any member of the audience wish to challenge the jurisdiction of the commission to hear this matter? Any member of the public, I should say, instead of the audience. Does any member of the public wish to challenge any planning commission member's ability to participate? Hearing none, the staff will now present the staff report. Thank you. So today you're considering design review application number Z0311-19-D. Is Technical difficulties. Let me know. You did. <laughs> there we go. So there's an overview. As Randy said, it's across the street. Um, the proposed project would convert the existing duplex into a mixed use commercial and residential building. The applicant has explained that the owner is not yet sure what commercial or office tenants would occupy the available spaces within the converted building. The subject 0.11 acre property, just about 5,000 square feet, is zoned community commercial and has historically been developed and used for commercial business operations starting in the 1980s. However, since the 1990s, the structure has been continuously used for residential purposes. The subject site is located on the west side of Portland Ave, directly adjacent to the flying gasoline service station. Public noticing was sent out um, prior to this planning commission hearing um, as the code requires to property owners and city staff members and any interested agencies. I don't think for this one we included, um, for instance, DSL, there's no environmental overlays and it's not a county road on this section of Portland so we didn't, we're not required to notice um, county transportation either. No formal comments were received. The C2 zoning district implements a maximum height of 35 feet. The existing building is 19 feet 6 inches tall, so well below the max height requirement or standard. Additionally, the C2 zoning district allows for a zero front side yard and rear yard setback, except when a property fronts Portland Ave, in which case the building cannot be set back more than 5 feet. The existing building appears to be constructed right on the property line, abutting the public sidewalk. As such, the existing building meets all dimensional standards of the C2 district and no modifications would be proposed to the current setbacks. In order to ensure that the future office and commercial uses remain in the scope of the allowable uses of the C2 district in Title 17, Special Condition Number 2 is recommended to limit future building occupants to only those uses allowed outright in the C2 zoning district. The proposed building conversion would be compatible with the surrounding commercial uses along Portland Ave. There's commercial properties on either side of the existing site. The project does not involve construction of a new building and will retain the existing building footprint and height. The proposed facade upgrades, lighting, screening, trash, and general building improvements meet the criteria of the city's section 17.44 building and siting design standards. When an existing residence along Portland Ave is proposed to be converted to commercial or mixed-use development, the C2 zoning district specifies that additional off-street parking shall not be required as long as A through D above on the screen of section 17.18.070 are met. Planning staff finds that the proposed development meets these criteria A through D above 
and then no additional parking is required by the change of use. Specifically, the building will not exceed a B occupancy rating, so standard A above is met. The applicant has submitted evidence to that effect in writing. No specific signs are proposed currently. Since the new business and office uses remain unknown, however, special condition number one is proposed to ensure that any future signs on site meet the requirements of standard B above. In order to find that the proposed project was consistent with standard C regarding traffic impacts, generation, traffic volumes, and street parking, city staff required a trip generation analysis. The results indicated relatively low volumes of traffic and fell far below the municipal code's threshold for requiring a traffic impact analysis. As such, no significant traffic impacts or parking needs are anticipated from the proposed project, and based on the submitted trip generation analysis, planning staff have determined that the proposed project meets the criteria of C above. Finally, in regards to D above, the proposed building will retain a residential appearance, as discussed in the findings, and will incorporate congruent landscape designs. The proposed landscaping will result in approximately 39% coverage of the f uh, about 5,000 square foot lot, greatly exceeding the 15% landscape coverage requirement of section code section 17.46.020 number one. However, the proposed landscaping plan does not include a commitment for continuous landscape maintenance as required by the code. So special condition of approval number three is recommended to ensure compliance with this section. Staff is recommending approval of the proposed project with five standard conditions and ten special conditions of approval as shown on the screen and in the staff report. Public Works has submitted preliminary comments in conjunction with City Engineering. Um, the applicant is aware of those extra requirements and there's a condition of approval stating that they need to comply with those requirements prior to building permit issuance. Um, we have attached a trash condition requiring the <coughs> applicant to um, <coughs> indicate their franchise um, hauler um, prior to building permit issuance. And I think we already went over the other conditions um, in our previous parts of our presentation. If you have any questions about them, I'm happy to answer um, and so provide more information. Regarding the trip generation, mm -hmm. um, while I appreciate that it was provided, I am curious um, how representative it is when we don't know the business type. So I was concerned about that myself. So there are specific uses allowed outright in the C2 zoning district. We've limited the project to only be able to allow occupants of those types of uses. So we asked the applicant to do their trip generation analysis based on the highest potential trip generation use, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Um, so the number of trips estimated, I think it was four, was based on that highest potential um, use of those commercial or office spaces. Okay. Mm -hmm. Plus, I have a question. Yeah. In a, uh, if you go to in, in your presentation to page 4-6, and down toward the bottom there's a paragraph that talks about uh, dimensional standards and required setbacks. I wonder if taken into consideration has been the redevelopment of Portland Avenue which my understanding is going to change its configuration and how that would affect the setback requirement. Yeah, so uh, are you talking about in the context of the downtown revitalization yes. plan? So I addressed that in the beginning of the staff report. Um, I thought that that might be a question. You'll see on 4-1, um, the staff report says, the subject stretch of Portland Ave is the city's commercial downtown core and it's part of a long-range planning effort intended to improve and reinvigorate businesses and public use on Portland Ave. Um, we make a finding that the proposed project's in keeping with the intent of the revitalization plan. Um, however, the revitalization plan is not a legal standard of review. So there is another spot and I'll find it. We're page 4-5. At the bottom, Ordinance 1486 adopted goals from the Downtown Revitalization Plan to the Comprehensive Plan, but it did not include any implementing policies or changes to the city's zoning title. It was also adopted as a guidance document. So we cannot use anything in the 
city's downtown revitalization plan, unfortunately, as a legal standard of review for this project. Okay. I have a couple. No, I was just saying, no matter what we do, the reality is that this is sitting right on the property line, the good old days, and that's literally not right some, on the sidewalk. Yeah, I mean, it's, yeah. it is what it is, so right. it's a constraint, and we just have to deal with it. Right, and this has come up before, and I think we've talked quite a while ago, um, but there are some great streetscape plans and ideas in the downtown revitalization plan that would be, you know, it would be wonderful if we could start implementing those. Um, however, legally, we're not able to at this point until the city adopts that as part of the zoning title. It's That's just guidance. not the only property like that either. Mm -hmm. I do have another question uh, on on parking. It's, uh, I'm always on parking. Yep. You're going to have four doors on this building. You're going to have a, a, an apartment and then uh, two retail spaces and then another leasable. Uh, just a, an assumption that each of the people that are going to be operating whatever uh, uh, enterprises that they're going to handle out of these rental spaces mm -hmm. are probably going to have to come to work and, and go home. So right. there's three or four vehicles there. Let's say it's a small insurance office, CPA, psychologist, whatever ends up in there. They often have an administrative, have somebody helping them also. So you are going to have a vehicle who require parking. Just based, if nobody ever shows up, you're going <laughs> to, uh, as a customer, uh, there's required parking there. Right. Uh, uh, I'm I think I'm probably speaking just slightly for Commissioner Poole here. Is we <laughs> we're going to end up with cars parked in neighborhoods because of these businesses, and, and mm -hmm. it'll generate complaints. And the idea that we never need off-street parking for anything anymore is simply doesn't seem to match reality for me. Right, and that's part of the reason we brought this to a design review is because these standards are subjective, number C, letter C, and D above. Um, so staff has made a recommendation to you, but it doesn't mean that you can't have a discussion about whether or not, you know, you agree with staff's recommendation or would like to change it. Yep. All right. Are we ready to open the public hearing testimony? Testimony for the uh, public hearing is now open. Um, the applicant or applicants may now present testimony and arguments. Welcome. Uh, state your names for the record, please. I'm Daryl McKay. I'm the one of the owners, my wife's the other one. <laughs> and I'm Todd Iceland with Iceland Architects, 1307 7th Street, Oregon City. Um, we're not really proposing any changes to the structure. Uh, it's a very unique structure. It's, it looks very residential as it is now. Um, based on walking through the structure and seeing how it was built, it appears to be built around 1900. And it was probably a livery stable or something like that. It, not typical residential construction. <coughs> as far as we know, it was used in a commercial use previously. Um, it was a dental office, and I don't know what else. Yeah, the only the only thing I've ever heard is is the dental office. Mm -hmm. So, and there's still um, evidence of that with plugs in the w floor for the uh, you know the chairs. So what we're looking at doing is making the front half of the building, and it's a very small building. I mean, Daryl owns the uh, gas station right. building next door as well. Um, so he just wants to kind of continue the hometown Main Street appearance. And so we're going to clean it up, put new windows and doors in on the front, wall in the windows on the right side of the building, which needs to be a firewall for safety reasons. Um, Two small offices are very small. I mean, they could accommodate two people possibly if they like each other. <laughs> <laughs> um, but they're set up to be one person off. One person. And parking on the street should be sufficient for this use. Um, 
it's not ideal and hopefully people are not spilling over into the neighborhood but there is adequate parking fronting the site to serve the residents there are two parking spaces alongside the building that will be used for the tenant back there primarily um, I don't know how that'll work out with the tenants and it's yet to be determined we did look very briefly at what it would take to pave more and create more parking in the back we would lose an entire landscape area and we gain two parking spaces which I think for the trade-off you know it's really not worth it we'd lose all that landscaping the proposed parking for the two vehicles that you mentioned with that area I don't believe it's paid now no Is it plan yeah. to be paved if well, required yeah <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah my thinking is that at least pave the length of the building right mm -hmm. which would be your parking for your two tenants yeah mm -hmm. well it's one tenant, one tenant. Mm -hmm. and then the, the ADA ramp that would make the ADA ramp accept more accessible if it's paved of course mm -hmm. so that's mm -hmm. one reason to have to pave it the um, LED wall pack light um, it stated that they were down lights looking at this picture it doesn't appear that they are uh, do you have any clarification on that? What? Those are along the side of the building, and they are focused down. They're not. They're not going to shine out then. No, they're not going to be up for shining. They comply with the night sky, dark sky standard. It would be on the side that you would propose being uh, where the ramp's going to be. Correct. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Yes. Okay one on the side and one at the rear of the building actually and they would be on a motion sensor okay. for security if you have any other questions be happy to respond to them I don't have any thank you okay. thank you very much so <coughs> the next uh thing would be uh, does anyone wish to speak in favor of the application and since you're the only ones here <laughs> Tom do you want to speak no does anyone wish to speak against the application does anyone want to provide neutral testimony does the applicant wish to provide rebuttal there is no testimony so no rebuttal does the staff have anything to add or recap no thank you Okay. Does any member of the commission have any other questions regarding clarification of the testimony to this point? If there are no further questions, then we will vote to close the public testimony portion of the hearing. Does anyone have any further questions? So uh, other than I I'm pretty sure you'll make it look as nice as you did the gas station. Yes. Yeah. Good, thank you. So let's make a motion that we close the public hearing. Malachi. I second. And uh, Commissioner Smith, Natalie Smith. Public portion of the testimony is now closed. Um, deliberation. Questions of staff. Further questions of staff from the commission. None. And discussion and deliberation. Does anybody want to discuss or deliberate? <laughs> <coughs> I have nothing to deliberate. So there's conditions and special conditions. Yep. Um, does somebody want to make a motion now? And no one does have anything to add or or statements or speeches or anything they want to make. Then, um, if we're all on board with the standard and special conditions as outlined in the staff okay. report, we could make a motion to include all those five standard conditions and the ten special conditions. I do have one question. Uh, perhaps for staff and it relates to what the uh, property owner said about 
the ADA ramp and, and needing pavement, and as of now, pavement's not required. Is that correct? Do we need to do anything about that? So usually that's reviewed by our building code department. Okay. There's a special condition there that requires them to comply with those standards. Good enough. Thank you very much. Good question, too, by the way. I think we're talking about that space right there that currently has, like, gravel and grass on yes. it. Yes. Okay. So who wants to make the motion? Thank you. I make a motion that we approve design review G0311-19-D with Second. the conditions and special conditions as outlined in the planning report. I second. Commissioner Malachi and Commissioner Pat Smith, uh, please call the roll. Commissioner Langston? Yes. Commissioner Natalie Smith? Yes. Commissioner Malachi? Yes. Commissioner Les Poole? Yes. Commissioner Pat Smith? Yes. Chair Rowlett? Yes. Um, done. Thank you. And there's a standard waiting period of 15 days. 15 days for appeals. And I think that's highly unlikely since you're the only ones here. Nobody, nobody can appeal. And um, so you were on the corner of Portland Avenue before and Clarendon, right? Your engineering firm? No. No? no. Okay. We've been in Oregon City for 27 years. Okay, I know I've seen you before, but I was thinking yeah. maybe it was. We put together the new board, I think. Okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So I guess the next is business from home. <coughs> and um, next is business from the audience. <laughs> <laughs> audience or the public. Councilor Mercero, anything? No? Okay. And there's information only update on changes to the extension compliance time limits in the Gladstone Municipal Code. Who's doing that? I, I am, but before we get there, I wanted to let commissioners know um, regarding the bus stop and the issue along Glen Echo Avenue, I wanted to let you know part of that is within city limits and part of it is not in city Ooh. limits. Mm -hmm. uh, so let me bring that up and I'll show you. So it creates an issue. Glen Echo's the line. So Glen Echo is in a partially city street and partially county Correct. road. So we would have to get clarification. This red line here, I don't know if you can see. Yeah. This portion is outside city limits. Mm -hmm. And then the right cool. here on Addy, city limits go right down the middle of the street. Mm -hmm. Right. So I just wanted you to be aware of that, but I will follow up with public works. Where is that in relation to what he was asking? That's the, uh, the orange area would be where from Addy yeah. to Abernathy. Yeah. This area right here. Green to that right there. Is it inside or outside? That it's right down the middle of the right, city, right down the middle of the street is Glen where Echo. of Glen Echo for that portion, correct? South side is in Gladstone, north correct. side's out, kind yes. of Jennings. I correct. figured out how to tell when you're in Gladstone or not. You look at their garbage can because we had two different services yeah. and two different <laughs> garbage cans. Yeah. But like I said, I will follow up with Public Works to get feedback on that. Yeah. Thank you. Good. And regarding um, the extension compliance, uh, City Attorney Duffman advises um, he's getting text amendments drafted. Unfortunately, it's been kind of on a back burner, but he's getting them drafted. We'll get that uh, this week, get it uh, filed with the DLCD um, and proceed from there to get the noticing out. It is currently scheduled to be on the October 8th City Council agenda for those um, proposed changes. So that's the update. Okay. All right. All right. Commissioners, do you have business? I have none. Attended awesome training today. Very yeah, beneficial. Good. Learned a lot. 
And that's going to be available through the city website. I'll follow up with our days. city administrator to see Thank how she would like to proceed. So there's a reason not to. I would actually recommend that we try to make those documents available to the public, um, just for transparency of process. Like I said, I'll follow up with our city administrator and, and let you all know, definitely. Um, the train was very, I thought it was one of the best ones I've been to. How much was that? For us to go to that, um, it was 199 per person. Okay. Thank you. That's a little bit more than what I figured, but um, and then of course, many of us still have to work full time, myself included. I tried to get my employer to to comp me for the hours, and they wouldn't do it. <laughs> you know, I said I was volunteering. Well, you know, if you're in Multnomah County and you're volunteering for something in Clackamas County, they could really care less, you know. But uh, Commissioner Langston's employer comped him, yep. Yep. and so did uh, Commissioner Smith's employer, no? No, he just let me. He said, that's fine. That, thank you for letting me know, because I told him I was going to attend. So, so you, you paid for it, too. Yep. And I'm in the same boat as you. I think the $199, you know, that the city paid is appreciated and it was well worth it. And I think every commission member, and I asked how often they do those, and they do them twice a year, but I think any new members of the Planning Commission should definitely go to that Absolutely. training. Extremely Tom, what do you think? Do you think it was worth 200 bucks for the city to pay for, for that training? I believe so. I started in the Planning Commission in 2007, and I hadn't had any training on any of the Planning Commission, and what I saw today would, would, be, would be very beneficial to help steer people in the right direction. Yeah. Well, it certainly gives you, they did a really good job of giving an overall view of what the, you know, and it wasn't just geared for the planning commission either. It was, you know. Yeah, it was it was awesome training. But it was something that I think every planning commissioner should go to, and the trainers had exceptional experience and knowledge. It was unbelievable yeah. the amount of experience and knowledge they had. So that's all I have. That's well, I just want to make a quick announcement, and that is uh, several months ago I started a little Facebook page. It's Gladstone Today, and I'm just putting events and notices and things on there. It's not the gossip page. If it was, I wouldn't be announcing it. But feel free to, to go in and comment. Uh, today I put a picture of the city halls and, and police station site on it and did some things at the uh, at the community festival. So just doing a little part to get the word out. Things are changing and uh, it's kind of fun to document it. Um, I mentioned that I, in July, I went around and I took a picture of all the construction going on and I need to get a thumb drive to all of you because Mayberry is changing. Yeah. Thanks. And how do we find that again? It's Gladstone Today on Facebook. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, not a not a big website, not a big giant business, just a just a source of information and a little outreach for the community. Yes, I'm the author, so <laughs> any misprints are on me. Pat? I don't have anything, thank you. So I uh, actually do have something. Okay, and um, then I have one okay, last so thing after you. Go ahead. So um I actually met up with Robert downstairs and uh he helped me get the Outlook app set up and connected to the city email. So if, if any of you want to do that, he can help you get that set up for on your phone. Oh, oh on your phone. phone. Okay. Yeah, I don't it's have mine on my phone. probably using uh, web something. No, Microsoft. this one's actually using their app rather than the web. Okay. But if you if you want it, Robert, help me get mine set up. Okay. Thank you. For I've that. done it before. It's not that bad if you know all the n names and numbers. Yeah. I wanted to mention that um, as far as missing meetings. There, the limit of meetings a, a appointed person in the city of Gladstone, or if you're on a commission or whatever, if you're appointed, is four. And basically, there's no unexcused. And anybody that, if I'm wrong, jump right in there. But as far as I know, there's no unexcused absence in that. It doesn't matter what the reason is that you're absent, if you're absent four times. 
you're considered to be resigned from the commission or traffic safety committee or whatever it is that you're on. Do you think I'm right about that? Uh, per our, the board's committees and commissions language, that is correct. So if one calendar year, correct. if right. in the in a calendar year from correct. December 31 to January, basically. Correct. So if you're in the hospital for six months and you can't make the meetings, that's a good reason to not make them. But nonetheless, you're for obvious reasons, you're not here, so you're that's it. So you resign. So you know, keep track of how many meetings you've missed or when you plan. If you don't want to resign from the commission, make sure that you don't go over, you know, three because on the fourth one you miss, you're done. That's then. So anyway, thank you. Is if somebody wants to make a motion to adjourn. I make a motion that we adjourn the planning commission meeting. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say no. Adjourned. Thank you.